What's up, Hoopers? Do the Lakers have a big man problem? Now, they got a lot of young stars. There was people really excited about Thomas Bryant, Damian Jones. But it's looking more and more like Anthony Davis might have to slide over to that five position. But what do I do on this channel? I bring up your concerns and your votes. I polled the audience, and with almost 1,000 votes, the votes have come in on who should be the starting five man. Plus, there's a bunch of really good comments. And now that the Lakers' five preseason games are done, they start next Tuesday with their first home opener. We're going to break down the preseason stats, see who's a winner, see who's a loser. If you are excited about this Lakers season or this NBA season, you're not going to want to miss it. Plus, some of the stats that I bring up at the end, oh boy. Well, you're just going to want to wait for those. I am the NBA white guy. I talk all things NBA hoops from a hooper's perspective. And if you love that kind of content, then make sure you dunk that like button. And you hit the subscribe button so that you never miss a video. All right, so I had about a 1,000 votes for who is going to be the Lakers' big man. Now, I just did a video about who was the most impressive player in the preseason, and it was without a shadow of a doubt, over 80% of you, and there was 1,700 votes in total, chose Kendrick Nunn. He's been incredible. He's a guy we've been talking about for months on end on this channel, a guy that I saw very, very, you know, ascending in 2020 with the Miami Heat, and I've just been high on him. So it was really cool to see that. But when it came to the big man, you guys are very, very diversified with your opinions. So I'm going to rank these dudes from the way that you guys vote them. And then I'm going to bring up your comments about these big men. So out of five different opportunities or choices that you had, the fifth one right here was Wenyan Gabriel. So Wenyan's a guy who's high energy. Um, they ran him a lot in that first game where he would come up, do the pick and rolls. Um, hasn't been too impressive and you know with the least amount of votes out of all of the big men again I think he's going to be a player who obviously gets some minutes for the Lakers and it's going to be you know matchup specific but he hasn't done really anything uh, to stand out or at least get his name up there into the higher minutes category number two on the list for you guys coming in at 22 percent see I told you right away this one's way different than, you know, most impressive player. When it comes to the big man, you guys are really, really tight with most everybody. But Thomas Bryant, at the beginning of the season, the last few months, you guys have been blowing me up in the comments about how Thomas Bryant's going to be that dude. And I was kind of like, yeah, I just don't see it. Now, I'm not here patting my back. There's a lot of things I've been wrong about, too, like Damian Jones. But, um, you know, the one thing I was super high on Damian Jones is we don't need a big man down there who can score buckets, right? We don't need a guy who can go out and get 25 points. We've got one of the best players in the NBA right now with Anthony Davis. He has been absolutely electrifying. And if we get this version of AD all season, it's a wrap. Like, that dude is looking good. We need a rim protector. We need a tough dude. We need a JaVale McGee, Dwight Howard style player. They won a championship with this. And that's what I really see with Damian Jones. And even though he's not scoring points, he's not really getting a lot of rebounds, he is blocking shots or at least altering shots. And that's really important, too. You get a guy like JaVale McGee who was so long and lengthy, and when he jumps, you know, his elbow or his bicep is above the rim. It makes point guards have to start doing this kind of stuff, and they miss more shots. So a lot of times it's not just blocks. It's altering shots. I think Damian Jones does it. You know, Thomas Bryant, hasn't. he's not a rim protector. We thought he could stretch the, the uh, you know defense out by shooting well, but we haven't seen that as much either. Now, again, before I get to the next few here, the only way my videos do any good is when you guys hit the like button and you're going to comment down below. So at the end of this, we're going to run another poll and we're going to discuss the preseason stats and really who's been making a name for themselves in the Lakers organization. So right now, hit the like button. That's what helps me out. In third place here, the third place was Damian Jones at 27%. So, you know, out of a thousand votes, you know, 250, uh, 270 of you are really thinking, you know, Damian Jones should be that that starter. Um, we're going to discuss this a little bit deeper in depth. Obviously, there's going to be situational, but I hate that. Like, I think you get a starting, you know, role and you go because that's how you get the chemistry. Last year, what did they have, like 50 different starting rotations? Comment down below how many it was. I can't remember, but it was something absurd. And you just don't form chemistry. So you saw this in the 2020 season when they won the championship. JaVale McGee, I think he averaged maybe seven, eight minutes a game, maybe 10. But he would start every game. It was just something consistent, right? 
And there was a major tweak in the postseason against the uh, Denver Nuggets. When Jokic was playing there, they needed somebody to muscle up on him. And who did they put in? Dwight Howard. It was a huge shift. I think that is really one of the main reasons they won the championship that year. But other than that, we kind of need a rotation to just start. And then we can finish games differently. But, you know, Damian Jones, he'd be a great starter. Next up on the list, we got to bring up the number one thing you guys voted for. 30% of you say AD is going to start at the five. Now, if he's going to start at the five, then that means Braun's going to probably be the four. And then what are we going to be doing next? Obviously, three guards. It's looking like it probably could be either Kendrick Nunn or Pat Bev with a Russell Westbrook and maybe a Reeves. But did you guys see in the preseason game last night when your boy, you know, Pat Bev went to get a defensive huddle together? And what did your boy Westbrook do? Sat there with his hands on his knees, shaking his head, thinking about himself because he just got cooked on defense. Who knows what this dude's thinking? I was so high on Westbrook and his attitude and, and his hustle. And then to see that, I'm just like, dude, get it together, man. Like, you were, it's just, it's ticking me off. But that also means, you know, they got to work on him, but he's probably going to get the starting nod. And, you know, with that, you've got two more spots. So that's what I want you guys to comment down below. We're going to get into the preseason stats. It gets crazier than this. But I want you to say who, if AD's at the five, then what's our three other guards with LeBron obviously being a, a starter? Now, I, there's one more crazy option that I put up there and you guys actually voted on. I can't believe it. Ooh, I had to bring this up. 14% of you said bring Shaq Daddy back. That's right, big diesel S on the arm there. Should we bring Shaq Daddy back? If is it that bad where 14% of you really think that Shaq could come back? Obviously, I think we're all kidding, but Dang, could you imagine Prime Shaq with this squad right here with AD and, and, and Braun, man. AD at that four, Shaq at the five, Braun. I don't care who you put out there. Put the water boys. That team is going to be nasty. But uh, we can't bring Shaq back. He, he's uh, got a good job, and he's a little bit old. Now what I want to do is bring up the preseason stats. It's been five games. Obviously, it's the preseason, but you can get a lot of telling moments out of this. So in order to do that, we got to jump over to the screen here. All right, and as you can see here, um, this is a website that has tallied every single statistic throughout the first five games of the preseason. And what do I love, love, love about it? Look who's leading in almost every statistical category. The unibrow, baby. We got him back. He is looking amazing. Um, again, we're going to go through some of his statistics and everybody else's. Now, we've just ranked the centers, and we got to look at who's doing any good for the Lakers organization, plus some of these wings that could be possibly starting if AD goes to the five. But I love seeing this, man, not only just because it's you know going to help the Lakers, but, dude, this guy is really good at basketball, and it sucks when these top players are hurt. That's why I'm so excited. How excited are you for this season? And what injured player are you most excited to see? For me personally, I love seeing, you know, AD, but I can't wait to watch Zion, dude. And again, he got kind of hurt, banged up in the uh, uh, preseason, but it sounds like he's okay. But this is going to be incredible if we get this kind of AD. Now, he's going to average more than 19 points. Uh, and nine boards, and that's simply because he was only averaging 21 point or minutes a game. And he only played three games, but those three games he looked very good. Um, so when these minutes start going up to, you know, probably 32-ish, uh, that's what he averaged, you know, a lot of the other seasons was 32, 33 minutes. And then when he went to the postseason, it was more like 38 minutes. So, you know, th these are going to increase. But um, just really, really solid across him. So I want to look at a couple different things. First and foremost, I want to go to minutes. Like, who was getting the minutes when it came to playing? And number one out of the gate was Austin Reeves. So this kind of tells me right now they're super high on Reeves. They want him to get the minutes. Um, the one thing that I didn't like about it is he does have the highest turnover ratio. And some of that's not just him being, you know, turnover prone. He did have the most minutes, but... I think he's probably got a little bit of excitement. Like we heard about him all off season doing three a days. I think he's coming in with super aggressive, like, you know, just trying to be the best he can possibly be. I got freaking LeBron James next to me. I got Anthony Davis. I'm trying to make it on the Lakers. So hopefully he calms down a little bit, but I see his hustle plays, his defense, um, you know, and, and shooting, you know, hundred percent from the free throw line. These are things that, you know, Anthony Davis, LeBron, they're just going to love it. If you are hustling and working harder than everybody on the court, there's nothing anybody can say about you. So, you know, hopefully these turnovers turn down a little bit. But right here, when we talk about big men, um, you got to go all the way really down to 
Jeez, all the way down. The big guys weren't getting minutes. Thomas Bryant was the most at 15. Wenyan Gabriel at 15. Matt Ryan uh, played, or sorry, not Matt Ryan. I was thinking of Jay Huff, the other white boy. Uh, Damian Jones played five games. He played 12 minutes a game. And Jay Huff, two minutes. I don't think Huff's going to really be um, getting too many minutes. I don't know. Maybe he'll go down to the, to the G League. But look at your boy right there. There's Shaq, daddy. Shaq came back for one game. Average seven minutes right there. So, obviously, it's Shaquille Harrison. But I thought we had the Shag Daddy back. Um, the big men just weren't getting the minutes, you know. And, and I wasn't too impressed. So, when we go to, like, let's talk about big men, right? Blocks per game. You know, this is where they need to really stand out if they're going to be rim protectors. And I was kind of shocked to see, um, you know, obviously, there's AD. Golly, are we really going to have to play AD at the five, you know, all season? Which, he's an incredible five. That's what an incredible center to have, um, but we just need him all season long. So the cool thing about AD is he plays hard. Like the good news about him, he plays freaking hard, but that leads him to injuries. I saw him actually, did you guys see a couple different times he came down on people's foot, but at least it was this way, like up and down and not sideways, but man, it just makes me nervous. Um, next up, Austin Reeves. Hustle player, played five games, had averaged a block a game, um, and it was getting on to great players who, you know, point guards and, and two guard shooting guards who were driving the middle and he's getting his hands on it. Plus, he had a lot of those strips, you know, where they're about to, they're just gathering to go up and he would strip that ball. So um, I'm really loving what Reeves is doing. Next up was Wenyan Gabriel. So he was averaging a block a game at, uh, you know, five, playing five games. So he wasn't, he's not the tallest by far, but he has high, high energy. Uh, you know, and he was a guy that you guys ranked the lowest amount of chance of getting a starting job for the five. Damian Jones is right there. Um, he's at point eight, played five games. Again, he's so long. He's so athletic. Some of those dunks, I mean, he has mega bunnies. He is up there dunking it with his chin in there. So um, I really like Damian Jones at the five personally because he can rim protect so well. And he doesn't lead in blocks, but I mean, he's gonna. He's going to be right there if he gets more minutes. But again, it's about altering shots a lot of times. Um, you know, you can go down the list here, but Thomas Bryant, not a lot of blocks um, as you go. So the other thing, hey, what are big men supposed to do? They're supposed to rebound. Again, who's leading that? Your boy, the Unibrown AD. And then you got Braun there. And, and Huff played two games. Uh, you know, he came in with the with the rebounds. But man, you go all the way down. You know, Thomas Bryant had 4.2. Um, geez, you got to go all the way down. Wenyon had three. Again, Damian Jones with just two rebounds. And I actually saw Damian Jones getting cooked on the offensive glass a few times, which I showed in another video where he just lost his man. Now, some of this, again, coming from a Hooper's perspective, they're so focused on defense right now and their position and playing so hard that they're not just playing basketball. They're not being reactive. And when you know a shot goes up, you got to go find your man and block, box him out. Um, so I saw a couple of those, but... Um, yeah, the, the, the rebounds, not too telling yet. But, hey, for, for our big men who are supposed to be starting at the five, I nothing's standing out to me. All right, so I want to just look at overall shooting, um, you know, by big men, by small men, by whoever. And the one thing we lack is three-point shooting. So when I go by three-point percentage, um, right out of the gate, I love seeing this. LeBron James at 41%. He's not going to shoot at 41 all season. That would be great if he did. But averaging four uh, attempts a game, again, last night, his, he, he shot the lights out. So he's shooting very efficiently at a high number. We're going to get that out of Braun. We know that. Um, if he starts stretching this number, last year I think he was 36%, up to 39 40%, and you know, averaging six attempts a game seven, that, that's a viable shooter. I talked about this in a few games. Like, we have a 3 and D dude. If, if LeBron plays a little bit harder on the defensive end, he gets more minutes off because we can have guys like Lonnie Walker, Kendrick Nunn stay in on that second unit and score a lot of buckets. That's going to really help this team, and he can shoot the lights out. So, you know, he's shooting up. Look at Anthony Davis at 40% shooting over three attempts a game. So, man, he shot, you know, if we can get him in the 30% too, that's stretching defenses out. Um, and right here, Kendrick Nunn at basically six attempts a game, 39%. That's what I'm talking about right there. So we have some great shooters out there. Matt Ryan came in. He obviously had that one high game, which which boosted this up. Um, the rest of them, he shot, eh, like I think he missed all his shots last night. Um, but, the, you know, it's a guy that, again, you're just going to know. He averaged nine attempts a game in the G League. So this is a dude, you know, on, on the opposing team's uh, 
you know chart when they're going through of what these players you know tendencies are matt ryan subs in the game get a hand up you know make sure you're watching him so it's good to have those kind of guys that can stretch defenses out uh, you know from there nothing else is very impressive free throw percentage you got um, only a few telling things. Obviously, you know, Austin Reeves, he's, gonna, he, he's, he's knocking him down. Matt Ryan, Cole Swider, Max Christie. But LeBron James right here with five attempts a game shooting uh, 81%. He's been a notorious pretty bad free throw shooter except for some of those Miami years. I'm seeing him a little bit more in rhythm, you know, this year instead of like the leaners, the faders falling in. I hate when he does that. Um, and then... You know, Anthony Davis at six attempts a game, 77. He's usually an 80% shooter. Last year, I think he was 50 or 60. It was terrible, but he had that wrist problem. So pretty high on some of this stuff here. Watching that fifth preseason game last night, I was very impressed with Lonnie Walker. I think that's a guy who could end up in that starting position. But right now, I kind of have a starting five of at Damian Jones at the five, AD at the four, Braun at the three. And then I'm going to have to go with Austin Reeves. And I would love to see Kendrick Nunn. But I think, you know, it's probably going to be more like a Westbrook Beverly type thing just because of they, they paid him. You know, that's just what it is. So what's your guys' starting five right now? Is AD the center uh, or is he the four? And who's going to be the guards going into Tuesday night? And please do me a favor and hit that like button. That's the only way my videos get out there is when you do that. So comment down below who's the Lakers starting five. And I am your NBA white guy. I talk all things NBA hoops from a hooper's perspective. So make sure you tap that subscribe button and the bell so you never miss a thing. And until my next video, homies, we'll catch you later.